Hi. This is the second part of a two-part tutorial about the blend if portion of the Lair Styles dialog. Last time we ended with this image of a baobab tree, and I told you there was more we could do with it, but we were out of time. Well, now we have time, so let's start there. I'm going to zoom in a bit on the branches. I'll do that by holding down the command key and the spacebar. That's control spacebar on a PC. And I'll click a couple of times to get up to about 100%. Just use the spacebar to arrange the branches where I'd like to have them. Now, if you remember, we were adding clouds to the sky by double-clicking on any blank area of the layer in the layer panel, which opened the layer style dialog. Then we went to the blend if portion at the bottom, chose the blue channel, and then we used the underlying layer sliders here in the bottom to show the cloud layer only where the layers below the cloud layer had light pixels in the blue channel in the 149 to 255 luminosity range to hide the cloud layer where there were dark pixels in the 0 to 98 luminosity range. And we used the option key, that's Alt on the PC, to break the slider in two so that the pixels in the 98 to 149 luminosity range were partially transparent. Now, let's say that we wanted to show a little bit more down here. Um, these branches are still a little attenuated. So let's drag this up to about Oh, 180 or so, but look what happens to the clouds when I do that. As I drag to the right, I see the branches better, but the clouds begin to break up and disappear. That's because that's a pretty dark blue up there. So let's close this and see what we can do to fix that. I'm going to select the retouch layer, which I've named since the last movie. It's always a good idea to name your layers. And I'm going to go to the adjustment layer icon at the bottom of the layer panel and choose a hue and saturation adjustment layer hide the cloud layer. I'm going to click on the little slider hand at the top of the panel. If you're using CS3 or below, you won't have this. In that case, you'll need to use one of the eyedropper tools, but since I'm on CS4, I'll use this. I'll click in the sky where it's really dark and drag right to increase the saturation of this particular set of hues up here. Let's take a peek at the channel panel so that we can see what it's really doing. Click on the channel tab to show that. And because I'm working with an adjustment layer, I can't just click on the name of the channel. I have to hide the channels that I don't want to see. Now, look at the gray up here as I drag the saturation slider. It started out there, and as I drag to the right, it gets lighter. Since the clouds are being hidden or revealed depending on the luminosity of the pixels in the blue channel, making them lighter should reveal more of the cloud layer. So let's go back to the layer panel and check and see if it did that. You can also change the lightness slider, of course, but I have found that in something like a bright blue sky, using the saturation slider usually works better. So let's show all of the channels so that we have full color picture again. Go back to the layers, show the clouds, and sure enough, now they are nice and visible. So I move the saturation slider, now you see them, now you don't. Put it back up where it was. Now all of this stuff is interactive, so you might find that you need to open up the layer style dialog again and go back to the channel and maybe tweak it a little bit more to hide or reveal a little bit more down here. But I think that looks pretty good, so I'm going to just say OK. Hold down the Option key and the Command and the Spacebar. That's Alt, Control, Spacebar, and a PC and click a few times to zoom back out, and there we go. I'm going to hide this by clicking in the gray area. So, that'll do it. It's all a matter of moving the sliders around and balancing things to get the look you want. Now, if you have the Move tool, which we do, you can move the sky around and arrange it however you would like to have it for your composition. It's not a mask, so it doesn't matter where you move it, you won't have to unlink anything. I'm going to undo that. Of course, the other advantage of having this as a layer style means that you can save it like any other layer style. You won't have much of a preview, but if you look at your layer styles as a list, you can see it. Double click to open it again. Then just click the New Style button, and that opens the New Style dialog. Make sure that Include Layer Blending Options is checked. And let's call it Baobab Sky. Click OK. OK. And now if I open up my Styles panel and go to the bottom, I can see it there, Baobab Sky. No preview, but there it is. And now we can start to really have fun. For instance, I can make a new layer, and let's put a gradient on it. Get the gradient tool. The rainbow looks good. It's radial. That should be fun. And we'll get a gradient. 
and now just click on the Baobab sky style and it blends like the clouds did. Well, pretty wild, huh? The other thing that you can do, and don't forget this, is to change the blending mode. Right now it's set to normal, but you can try other blending modes and see what those do, because sometimes they can be a whole lot of fun. If you get the Move tool, which you can do by just tapping the V key, and you hold down the Shift key on your keyboard, you can use the plus and minus keys to cycle through the blending modes very quickly and get to something that's really interesting. The other thing that you can do is use the save style here as a jumping off place. I could double click to open it up. I've already got a layer style, but I can still change it. I can change the blend if down here. For instance, if I wanted the white in these clouds to be a little bit more transparent, I could hold down the option key, Alt on a PC, and drag the white point slider to hide or reveal a little bit more of that um, underlying gradient. Notice that I can drag the sliders over each other so that there are no pixels in the layer that are completely opaque. All of them will be semi-transparent. And um, that's that. You're only limited by your imagination, so have fun with it. This has been Robin Wood, and I hope you found this helpful.